just like well done i was in, like i'm saying that three times fast that's a bit of a mouthful i had i had to think hard about that if you're on the video you probably saw me look down and be oh like oh my goodness focus on the word get it right focus get on the word Hello, 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 and welcome to Well Shit. It really is that simple. I'm Claire. And I'm Serena. On this podcast, we help you to understand about your 12 universal needs, why they are currently not being well met, how to meet them in ways that work for you, and how to consistently do so in quick, easy, and simple ways that fit seamlessly into your life. We'll also help you to understand how doing so will have a positive ripple effect in literally every area of your life. If you like what you hear, sign up for more support with meeting your needs with your weekly Universal Needs Notes at theuniversalneeds.com. And enjoy the show. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everyone. So it's been a little while since we've done a little bit of a recording session at this end. We just had the funny start to this session. So um, once we get all set up, we're just about to, to kind of get into it and get our headphones on, get the mics going. And uh, all of a sudden I'm like, what's that noise? Serena's like, I'm like, I'm like, it's coming from you. <laughs> Serena's like, no, it's not. It's, it's coming from over there. And literally, we're like around all of the setup. Is it coming from here? Is it? And it sounded a little bit like an electrical noise. It was like a like a pulsing almost. Like, a bzzz. like I'm like, what is that sound? I'm like, it's fine. As long as the mics don't pick it up, we can just get started. And then we went to start again. I'm like, no, I have to figure out what the sound is. Turn out. Yeah, as long as the mics don't pick it up, we'll just be like, what? Oh, these calls and that. Uh, turned <laughs> out it was my kombucha. Like the the top wasn't on properly, and there was this like. So yeah, that's been a that's been a fun start to today's. <laughs> I was actually saying to Serena, as someone who's house sat for a long time, it's one of my favorite games to play as a house sitter, which is like, what's, what's that, that sound? sound? Like, <laughs> like when you're in a new place, like often like the dishwasher or the washing machine, or um, sometimes random. Like I was going to say flora and fauna. The flora don't tend to make sounds. The, no. the fauna do. Um, I, I remember it was once I went looking for something and I was like, oh my goodness, it's a frog. Like. I didn't know frogs could make that sound. I had, I had um, um, uh, somebody was telling me recently that they were I had a similar experience in Key West, and they're like, "Holy cats! It's a toad!" I'm like, "Okay, welcome Did to you the say tropics. Holy cats! That's what they said. <laughs> I thought that was the best phrase ever. I'm like, I've never heard that, especially for down here, because <laughs> there are two things that we have a lot, lot of. of. <laughs> Larry. If you haven't heard of Larry yet, like mm, Larry, you'll, Larry. You'll, you'll hear more of Larry. Go and tell but, who Larry is. I don't think you've shared who Larry is yet, have you? Oh my God, we're going to do a whole podcast on Larry. <laughs> he's my cat and he's the best. He's a very I, he's a very cool cat, I have to say. He's the coolest fucking cat ever. <laughs> we took him on a walk the other night. Like he just, followed us. I and was we're like, like, oh. like, like, let me just clarify here. Didn't take him on a walk on a leash, no. right? Just went for a walk with your cat. Yeah, <laughs> he walked and then he'd stop and we're like, come on, buds. And he'd like <laughs> trot up and then he did a hard stop and we walked, we, we got pretty far away from him and we're like, Okay, like hard stop. Like those are your boundaries. Okay, we'll turn around. We respected Larry's boundaries, oh and he god, was I so fucking. Fa- yeah, oh my god! Like <laughs> the Larry episode. To okay. be continued. To be continued. Anyway, that, surprisingly <laughs> enough, this Larry, isn't, a Larry isn't, episode. isn't the topic of conversation today. I know this is a, a little bit out there, a little strange. Um. But today we're asking a question. Today's kind of a little, it's going to take a bit of a different format because quite often mm-hmm. we'll have like notes of like things that we want to make sure we include. So we, we touch on the important topics uh, and content points. Uh, why? I'm sorry. I'm just thinking of the fact that like I'm so excited for the Larry episode <laughs> now. Okay, back in the room. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Are you with us? It's still going to be a fun episode. It's going to be such a cool episode. We'll have pictures. No, stuff. I meant as in this is still oh. going to be a fun episode. This one too. Stay, this one too. Stay, keep, stay keep, tuned. Keep yeah. listening. This is going to be good too. Oh my goodness. Are we, are, are, can, we, can we move on from Larry? Is that allowed? Just for now. Just for now. We'll come back, I promise. At some point. Larry's going to be. Cool. I mean, at some point. Right. Yeah, we, I think cool we're going to have to bring yeah. Larry around so that he can come and actually 
join us on a podcast. But he'll sit on the computer and be That's like, very this true. is my spot. Well, he'll probably take out half of the lighting, <laughs> the well, mics. <laughs> and then Larry will be the people person, or the Creature? animal <laughs> that people want to follow. And they'll yeah. be like, Claire yeah. and Serena? Oh, those are Claire Larry's and Serena friends. Yes. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Random tangent <laughs> aside. Oh, it's going to be a good episode. I can feel it already. So as I said, today's going to take it a bit of a different form because we're not doing our usual. Let's just, we're just going to have a conversation because this is a question that I kind of posed to Serena. We were, we were doing some work, oh, maybe a couple of months back. And I remember like sitting back, every now and again, I do this. Like we'll be in the middle of creating content. We're we'll in the middle of doing something. And I'll be like, there's this like pregnant pause where I'm like, I'm going to take this like sit, like sit back and I'm like this. I put my, my cross my arms, What's and that's a pregnant pause, a long pause. Huh. <laughs> cool. I mean, that's as far as that was my understanding. Feel free to write in with your own definitions if you have different ones. That's what like a pregnant pause is like a big one. Like, it, in that as sense. in like, and I think it's also like there's the expectation of what you're going to say on the other side of it. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Sense. Thank you for explaining that. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, we educate about all kinds of things on this show, apparently. Anyway, so I have this thing that I do where I sit back and I cross my arms. And I can just tell at that point Serena's like, oh crap. <laughs> now where's she going? Because normally when I do that, it's because there's a bit of a plot twist coming, or I'm going to go off on a tangent, or I'm looking to go back and change something that's maybe yeah. been established or, for a while. We, we should do all of this. Yes. And. <laughs> Deep breaths. So I had, so this happened a couple of months ago and I was like, you know what? I've been kind of like wrestling with something for a while now. Uh, and she's like, okay. And I'm like, should we just share the detail of all 12 of the universal needs? Like, should we share? And that was the, I don't know if you have, if you're not on the video, I can't even describe the face. <laughs> it just gave, it was a face. Let's just say it. Um, well, and, and I had to step in and say, I had, I actually had some friends that listened to the podcast that mm-hmm. were like, they came in and they're like, the only criticism I have is, you know, sometimes it sounds like a sell. Like you're like, I have all these things and, and we actually did a series on it. The we did I a, have a secret. Like, well, yeah, we did an episode on it. An yeah. episode, yeah. And By the way, apologies that we are having a thunderstorm right now. That low rumble wasn't coming from either of us. We have got thunder and lightning <laughs> happening right now, just in case you were wondering, what is that sound? Back to Serena. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that series and it was because, I mean, that my episode. husband. The episode. Why do I keep saying <laughs> I have series? No idea. It's all good. Maybe it it's should good. be a series. Maybe we'll do a series on it. Who knows? I mean, this is maybe the maybe that was the first one in the series. Maybe this is part two of the series actually that we're recording right now. I like that part yeah. two. I'm going to keep saying series. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so my husband had, you know, he, as we explained, he was kind of like it's like you have a big secret. Frustrated. Yeah, he was yeah. frustrated because there was this this almost like secret, and it's like we don't have a secret but we want to make sure that we're putting it out there correctly and making sure people know the um that'll be the thunder then yeah <laughs> we're, we're being we're being responsible in how yes. we're sharing about it i think that's yeah it, yeah yes and especially <laughs> coming and i mean with documentaries and all the things that are coming about there's so many people who are able to share their opinions Mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that we are doing it responsibly well and this isn't just an opinion this is a tool that can affect and change how somebody is living their life we know because we've done it ourselves Mm -hmm. and we've we've done work with lots of clients where we've had the same thing so this is not just an opinion i had i had the okay I'm going there so I had this thought today I was going to share on social media which is like opinions are like assholes everybody has one but that doesn't mean to say that you should put yours out there unless somebody's specifically asked to see it like <laughs> just saying I really like that. <laughs> I'm just like don't share yours unless yes. somebody specifically asked to see it <laughs> oh my god or you check Not- whether they're open to it that's the other option <laughs> Larry shows us starfish all the time and he puts it on all of our things. But that's a different episode. We need to that move on talked. from Larry. We need to move on. I'm just saying. But you're talking about little starfish. <laughs> he puts starfish kisses on everything. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes. 
So we want to be responsible with mm-hmm. how we are releasing our content. Right. And we actually had one of um, my close friends was like, it almost seems like a like a bait and switch mm-hmm. type of thing. You're like, you have this, but you have to do this to get this. And it's right. like... It's almost like we're trying to use it as some long sell or something. Right. Anybody who knows this, like that's the exact opposite of how we work. And it's funny because I actually shared that with a friend of mine and she was like, wait, what? Like, Somebody really thinks that about how much free content do you put out? I'm like, I know, but if someone's feeling that way, that's a legitimate kind of valid Mm -hmm. thing that they're feeling. So we need to address it. So this question came up. Yeah. And I had to say it was somebody that knows us Mm -hmm. like knows who we are so for all the people who don't know us personally we want to be we we want to make sure that you know where we're at because we always want to be transparent yeah where we're coming from so i think maybe the starting point is well why wouldn't we i mean i think we've shared this before but i think it's important in the context of this conversation to say why wouldn't we just tell everybody what the 12 universe, yeah, universal needs are? And the reality is there's really, there's really kind of two main reasons for this. The first is that if we share the detail of the 12 universal needs and somebody is trying to meet their own needs, but we don't share also alongside it, the detail of the red green spectrum, which is um, for those of you who don't know the, the universal needs tree is um, the universal needs, the 12 universal needs, um, fall into four groups. The four groups correspond to the four different sections of a tree. Um, uh, so you've got the survival needs, which is your root needs, your intrinsic needs, uh, which is the trunk needs, they're the needs that relate to your internal well-being. You've got the branches, which are the expansive needs, and you've got the leaves and the fruit, which are the enriching needs. So that's the tree. Those are the groups of needs. Um, but the reason we haven't shared the detail of what specifically needs fall into which groups is that we also share the red-green spectrum, which is understanding that the way you meet your needs sits somewhere on a spectrum from one end uh, where you are... Um, doing a lot of stuff to meet the need, but getting very little benefit, benefit if any benefit, and sometimes draining. Um, so it's the TV dinner way of meeting needs, where it's like, uh, it might stop you from being hungry for 30 minutes, but 30 minutes later, you're going to need something more because it's all it's done is it's masked the hunger. It hasn't actually provided the nourishment that you need. And at the green end of the spectrum, which is the opposite end of the spectrum, I say pointing at Serena, it's interesting, like the red end of the spectrum <laughs> and the green end of the spectrum. So Serena is the green end of the spectrum. She's wearing a green shirt if you're not watching on the video. Um, so uh, at the green end of the spectrum, you can be doing very, very little to meet your needs, but receiving huge benefit because this is like the home cook, a home cooked whole food nutritionally balanced way of meeting needs. So it's like not only does it um, satisfy the hunger, it actually provides the nourishment that the hunger is indicating is present. Um, so the issue is, is culturally and societally, we're taught to meet our needs more at the red end of the spectrum. That end of the spectrum where you can be doing loads and loads of stuff, but not actually receiving any benefit and sometimes feeling drained by it. So if you know. 12 needs that you have because most people don't know what their 12 needs are most people don't know there are 12 most people probably could name three maybe maximum Uh, i mean sometimes up to six depending if you know other models that are out there even though those models the 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 um the needs are not necessarily um as helpful as they are in the universal needs from our experience um so some people your average person i would imagine could name about three someone who maybe's done a bit of personal development may be able to name maybe six or so um but the thing is that if you then give somebody 12 and they're trying to meet all of those 12 but the only way they know to meet them is the red spectrum ways of meeting them what they can be doing is doing more and more and more to try and meet all of these needs but in actual fact ending up feeling more drained and less resourced as a result of it than if they didn't know about the needs at all and obviously the whole point of us sharing about the universal needs is to help people feel more resourced and fulfilled so giving information out that's not going to have that effect in fact could have the opposite and is more likely to have the opposite effect is one of the reasons that we decided that it wasn't a good idea so far well and (laughs) since everything you do every single day every second of every every second of every day (laughs) Is to meet your needs. Like it's what we're, we are literally conditioned to meet our needs because Mm -hmm. that is what we do. So you meet them. You don't always think like, ooh, is this the best way Mm -hmm. of meeting this for me? Like there's that little pause that really makes a difference. And if we put out what the needs are, it's like you can focus on those words, those Mm -hmm. the symbolism of the words that we use and be like, oh, well, I'm doing that. And it's like, Yes, and and there's a big 
And and yeah. I, I think we've sp- spoken about it before. We we try and very u- rarely will we use the word but. Right. That's a that's a language thing. But tends uh, but really invalidates everything that's come before it and says yes that and something extra, which is why it's yes. a language thing that we 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 use. So it's a big and because I want right. to say it's a big but, <laughs> but no, it's a big. And yes. we want to make sure that we're doing it responsibly. We've seen so many situations where people have good content, good ideas. Good intentions. And mm-hmm. the impact isn't necessarily in alignment with those. And I think the thing it is... It is harmful. Yeah, it is. And that's the thing is that we don't want to do something. We want to be responsible in how we're putting this out there and not do it in a harmful way. Um, and as, as Serena was just saying... Even if you do stop and think, is this uh, the best way for me to meet this need? If you don't understand those aspects of the red green spectrum, the context of what affects the way you're meeting need and whether it is a health, a, a, a more supportive way of meeting the need or less supportive way of meeting the need, um, isn't I, isn't I, present. I want to jump in there too, and also whether that's you might be meeting this need and compromising compromising. Mm-hmm. Many, many other needs. Many, many, many other needs. So that's where the needs formula comes in. So it's there's a, there's a lot of layers and nuance to this. And it's really funny because as we're talking about this, I realize it sounds really complicated. It's actually really simple. There's a reason that the, the podcast is called. Yeah. Well, shit. <laughs> yeah, it, it really, really is, is that, that simple. simple. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I don't think, well, shit, it really is that complicated would have had quite the same effect. Um, and also. <laughs> Let me listen to that one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And the reality is, it really is. That's the one thing consistently, the feedback we get over and over again is like, oh my God, it really is this simple, isn't it? It's like, yeah, it actually mm-hmm. is. Um, but you, there's a lot of understanding and a little bit of unlearning that is required in order for it to be that simple. Yes. So um, so that's obviously, that's the primary, that's the, the one of the reasons. The other reason is that when we talk about um, needs, one of the things that we talk about is the seven keys to getting all of your needs consistently met. We talk about them in, I think it's episodes two onwards I think two or three onwards um maybe three onwards yes we do intro we've got self first which is the wisdom of Tribbiani and then from episode three onwards <laughs> we have sorry I'm 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 the uh, the podcast historian in the group. Um, so um, so if you want to go back and listen to what those key those seven keys are, go back and listen to episodes. I think it's three through maybe six or seven, something like that. Um, I think it's six because I think seven is boundaries. Anyway, moving on. Um, you can go back and listen to those keys, but one of the keys which is so critical and fundamental is the interconnectedness key. And that is this understanding, and this obviously applies and shows up when we talk about self first, which we talk about in episode two, um, which is that um, if you meet your needs in ways that have a side consequence of costing somebody else their needs because of that intrinsic interconnectedness between human beings, whether we know each other or not, it will actually negatively impact your own needs. Likewise, if you meet your needs in ways that have a side, side consequence of benefiting somebody else because of that intrinsic interconnectedness it can benefit your needs so that's why when we talk about self first being taking care of our needs as the priority in the minimum in ways that do not harm others or their needs and sometimes in ways that benefit them the thing about it is unless you really get this unless you really understand interconnectedness this content can be used in unintentionally and intentionally malicious ways. So it could be used to manipulate other people. Uh, It could be used in ways where you're going to get your needs and it could be weaponized. I mean, that was one of the things that that I was very clear on, like right at the beginning is that it it was very easy if you don't get that interconnectedness piece to be like, oh, well, I'm meeting my needs. Like it's like, that's the most important thing here. It's like, uh aha, no. What's more important, most important is that you're meeting your needs in ways that do not harm others. And by doing that, not only is it going to weaponize, but we weaponize against other people because it actually affects our needs we're actually weaponizing it against ourselves so we're kind of defeating that entire point in the first place this is one of the things that people don't realize is that when they behave in a way that harm other people and their needs it is actually harming themselves so any benefit you're gonna get is gonna get um what's the word negated negated good word yes great word um negated because of the negative impact to your needs as well so that's like one of the other reasons that like interconnectedness i remember there was a period of time where serena was like it was like every almost every fifth word out of your mouth was like interconnectedness interconnectedness. because once you got it you got it and you're like oh my goodness what a difference this makes yeah it was 
well, actually, it kind of feels weird being in this moment. It was almost life changing to realize, mm -hmm. like the true meaning of interconnectedness and what I do in my daily life and how everything that I'm doing to meet my own needs does affect somebody else and making or sure- Or can do. Or it can, can do, yes. Yeah. Thank you for that correction. Cause yes, it can. And a lot of times it did, especially when I'm in a position where, you know, um, I hate actually using this phrase, but a position of power- Quote unquote, yeah. Quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like that I could be affecting the people who I was, quote unquote, in power over. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that changed the game for me. It changed the game in my in my personal relationships. Right. I mean, it's boundaries, 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 <laughs> and interconnectedness, interconnectedness interconnectedness like well done i was like i'm saying that three times fast that's a bit of a mouthful i, ha I had to think hard about that if you're on the video you probably saw me look down and be oh like oh my goodness focus on the word get it right focus get on the word right. <laughs> yeah so this is i mean there, we have we have some really valid reasons for not having shared the detail of the needs um the specific 12 universal needs so far um and for the longest time, it was never even like never did we consider that we might share this outside of the program because the program is where we go through the detail of the red green spectrum and we talk about interconnectedness at length in the program in order to understand contextually how it's relevant to each of the needs. So I then said, Serena, I think we might need to share the detail of the universal needs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was your reaction when I said like without before I gave you any explanation what was your initial thought when I said that uh, probably not <laughs> <laughs> well just I mean it's kind of funny knowing what I know knowing mm -hmm. what we know and knowing how easy it is to like Mm. We we watch documentaries and we're like, oh, needs, 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 mm -hmm. needs, 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 needs. We can see how things are happening, why things are happening. Mm -hmm. And we're like, and we have the interconnectedness and we have all of the knowledge of the program for us to be like, okay, we're doing this in a way that is. In integrity and alignment. Yeah. All the things. And in alignment with humanity, not right. just with in alignment with our goals and what we want to do. And, and with our internal integrity like, and that sort of thing. And luckily, I mean, the fact that we have two separate people who have a mutual integrity, I, I mean, yeah, our integrity yes. is in with alignment with ourselves, with each other. Mm -hmm. And we feel with the better, humanity. the greater good, the, humanity. And, 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 and not only that, it, we feel that that's the place now and we're continually seeking to bring ourselves further in alignment with yes. that. Where anytime we find a gap, it's like, okay, how do, we, how do we close that gap? How do we bring ourselves more into alignment with that? Because nobody's perfect. We don't believe we're the, we've got the definitive answers to everything, life, the universe and everything, 42 apparently. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, we don't, we're not, arrogant enough to believe that we have the answers for everything so as we continue to learn and grow we continue to refine and develop what it is that we do and like we've seen how other people are not necessarily operating in quite that way and so it's kind of a scary thought it like just I mean, to share this publicly so I think it's a really <laughs> i mean we've had many private conversations on mm -hmm. how scary it is how scary what people are doing is and without how, this knowledge yes and what they could do with this knowledge and i think that's the thing is that it's like and it's not just that they're doing harm to other people it's that they're doing harm to themselves mm -hmm. that's the thing is that they don't realize people don't realize the effect that their choices are having on themselves at an unconscious level at a um at a level where they're not which they're not aware of um and it's go ahead well, and they're meeting, they may be meeting one need 
In a, a lot. In, but in a very red spectrum right. way. But to them, because they don't know the red green spectrum, they don't know the needs in general, they just feel they're like, oh, well, yes, more of this, more of this. This feels good. And they don't know what the alternative feels like. They don't know what the alternative feels like. And they're meeting this need, but they don't realize there are multiple other needs down here. They're, and uh, you can't see my hands if you're on the audio, but you have one that's way, like, you have one need to very much well met in a red spectrum I say, way. I wouldn't say well met. It's uh, met, met a lot in a red spectrum met a way. a lot yeah. in a red spectrum <laughs> way. But there are multiple other needs that are actually being not met eroded, and impacted, eroded. Yeah. And what would be the word for not met? I mean, Im- like... Impacted, unmet. Like, I would say it's like eroded. It's um, actually a detriment to yeah, those needs. exactly. It's like there's a... That we talk about sometimes that there are there are three levels when we look at each of the actual needs looking forgetting the red green spectrum for a second is that in the middle the need is neither met nor unmet so it's sort of in that neutral space if you go above that point it's met and if you go below that point it's unmet and once you go below that point where it's neither met nor unmet that's where you get into the danger zone because our unmet needs end up pulling the strings on at every Thought, feeling, action, choice, behavior, and we don't even realize what is uh, what is the source of that. What what's pulling the strings as far as all all of that is concerned? And we we're showing this from personal experience. We've been here mm-hmm. too. This is not like this is how the world works. This is like this is how we we used to work. This is how we see uh, it working within the people that we work with. Yes. So why on earth would I even talk about, why would I even float the idea of making this public and sharing the detail of the 12 universal needs? Well, the reason is that there are other models that are being used out there that are ineffective, harmful, um, coming from their appropriated. So, um, I mean, especially if you look at something like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and we've spoken about this at length in episode one, the move over Maslow episode, like all of the reasons why Maslow's hierarchy of needs is incomplete, ineffective and harmful in a lot of different ways. You want to go and find all the detail on that, like go back and read, like watch that, watch that episode, listen to that episode. Cause it's, uh, I won't do it justice if I try and recap right now, there's too many aspects of it. But the thing is that it is the industry standard and it is being used and taught in so many different spaces in the business world. It's being taught in uh, education like Maslow before Bloom, uh, if you don't know. So uh, Maslow is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Bloom is an educational taxonomy, which explains how people learn. And what they talk about is Maslow before Bloom, which is that, that a person's needs have to be met before they can actually think about learning. So when they're talking about an educational context, Maslow before Bloom comes up a lot um you look at the healthcare industry people are trained in terms of care for patients although minimally quite often but they're done it's done using Maslow's hierarchy of needs you learned it in school right I Um, learned it in like elementary school is where I remember it from like uh, that was just it's going back a ways yeah I I learned it at university in part of my business degree. Um, I did business in IT, but it was in the business context, uh, the business side of it, that I learned about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I think it might have even been in the human resource management module. Um, So again, it applies in business. It applies across the board. When you start looking at things, it's being utilized everywhere. And... I said to Serene, I'm like, I'm like, if you want to look up Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you Google Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and I don't even know how many thousands, millions of hits probably come up, um, and images come up where you can see Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I said to her, I was like, I, like, we both know that what we teach in the universal needs is so much more effective than that. It is so much um, more applicable than that. It has um, the aspects of harm that are there in Maslow's aren't there within ours. Um, And any that we find out about, we always uh, do our best to rectify as soon as we know about them. We're constantly updating and changing (laughs) our content to make sure that it's relevant. And I... I, To to Serena's frustration, because she's normally the one who has to update the slide decks when we we do so. Um, She does an amazing job at it. But it's like, like, it's not okay with us leaving something that isn't going to work, right? Absolutely. And I, I feel like that's really important to say about where we come from. It's like, we will... Like, if we find out information, we're not going to be like, well, this is what we wrote and this is what we put out there. So that's what it is. It's 
learn, grow. Yeah. Okay, we better. need to change this like, in order to include the things that we've just been aware of. And even sometimes it may be things that we were already aware of, but we didn't put in the content. And I'm like, hold on a second, this is important. We need to make sure that we explicitly like spell this out for people. Um, and so we're always continuing to learn, evolve and update. Although the actual model itself, the needs included hasn't changed. Um, really for probably best part of six years. Um, <clears throat> there are, we've made changes to what we share in the content around it. The, the seven keys didn't exist probably six years ago. The groups didn't even exist six years ago. Um, so things like we, we continue to refine and develop it and grow it. But the more important thing is that, um, is that it's, it's more effective when you're looking at whether you're like, if you think about why is Maslow being taught in these, in these, um, applications, it's being taught in business to be able to have better customer service. Well, if your model for what your customers needs are, isn't as accurate or helpful or effective, you're going to be less good at meeting your customers needs. If your model for meeting your employees needs is based on an outdated model that isn't effective anymore, then you're going to be meeting them in less effective ways. If you are looking from an educational standpoint and making sure a child's needs are met, but um, the, um, before their educational needs can be met and you're using an ineffective outdated model, it's going to affect the um, the how how good you're going to be at teaching. The same thing with healthcare. Like if you're trying to care for somebody and your understanding of their needs is only focused on a certain few, and you're missing some of the key ones that are going to make a huge difference to their their kind of healthcare experience. Like, and you look at all of the different other applications. There are so many applications of needs work. I mean, like we, every time we try and list them, it's like I get a headache just thinking <laughs> about how many of them there are. And it's like if if this is this ineffective, harmful, outdated model is being used across the board, it's never going to be replaced unless we share the detail of the universal needs. Because often when you share the needs, people are like, oh, oh, God, I can see why. <laughs> that, I mean, even just the groups. I've, I've shared just the groups with people who use Maslow's in their business. And when they see the, the groups, they're like, Oh, well, hmm. shit. well, shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> ah, I see. Yep. I can mm -hmm. see why we might need to change things up here, but you're never going to really create that until people can see what those, and you're not going to like, if we want to get this into places where it's being used in education, in business, in universities, in healthcare, you're not going to get that people we're not going to be able to help people see why that change needs to happen until they can see the the detail of the model and they're not going to be able to see the detail of the model currently unless they go through the program and i'm not sure the people in the power the powers that be um in all these different places are the people who are going to choose to go through a program such as this one so this is why i floated the idea and what did you think then <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the argument is so strong on both sides. It doesn't, like, sharing what I've just shared in no way negates the concerns that we have around not, like, the reasons for not sharing it, right? It it absolutely does. And kind of an odd to what you said, like, I'll tell people, you know, generally as I'm speaking, like, I might not make a focus on this is a group, this is a group, but I'll say something and they're like, oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> like, and, it, and you can hear it hit deeper. Different, and I'm the like, different levels, right? Yeah. Okay, so what we're what we're saying, like, does resonate? Mm -hmm. And I think I, I think back to my teachings of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, as I've you know, until the point where I learned about the universal needs, and just the the real feeling of incompleteness mm -hmm. and lacking of that. And I'm like, wow, that's that's what we base everything off of. Like I had learned that and now I know this. And I'm like, no, Maslow, no. <laughs> like, and because the more I know, like from a fate hands in the air, like face value, it's like, okay, that makes sense. Maslow's little pyramid makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then you're get into it a little a deeper. little bit deeper mm -hmm. and you're like well what about this what about this what about this and then you get into the appropriation you're like well wait a minute mm -hmm. like i mean there's so many layers of and there's so much context missing from that model i had to say and i'm gonna say this this is me this is my opinion like 
honestly, Maslow, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, it's fair. I, I think that's. I think it's fair. And interestingly enough, we had an there was a that we had a conversation earlier today, which I think is important and relevant when we're talking about what are the reasons that we feel like we want to share the detail of the needs, uh, and that is that sometimes when we are giving specific examples about things, we will share like individual needs, and we'll go, oh, there, this is the security need, mm-hmm. or this is the uh, foundation function need, or what have you. So we will t- like. It's not like we're like. We're not trying to be secretive yes. or be like, you have to join our yes. program to know. We will never talk about any of the needs. We, I mean, obviously, because sometimes it's relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't know whether our listeners are aware of this, um, but I sometimes write for entrepreneur.com, uh, which is an online um, business and leadership focused magazine. Um, and I was putting together an article today, I put together two articles today actually, and sent them over to Serena just to get her thoughts on it, see if there was anything missing, see if there was anything she thought we should add to it. And uh, and it was interesting because we were talking just before we started recording and we were talking about the article and you wanna, you wanna share what, what you were sharing about it? I'm not really sure which part you were actually <laughs> referencing to. I mean, it's, so, it's an amazing fucking article. That's all I can <laughs> say. I'm like, when she says that, I'm like, yes, I said, wow. Cause. You said, wow. But what do you say? You said some of the, that most of the value was in seeing the needs listed out. Yes. in that article, yes. I specified several of, I didn't go to all 12, but I specified several of them and the context in which people's needs are being negatively impacted in a working environment. And you said. That that's what made the difference. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, no, but it was because yeah. like, I was like, wait, I, well, yeah, I did say, I know, because, and that's the thing. It's such, it's such part of our everyday spirit. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh no, like that actually that really helped. Yeah. And it helps people to understand. And that's the other thing is it helps people to understand the importance of needs. I think that's one of the other things that we haven't really spoken about is that not just the importance of needs, but the nuance of needs and how there's so much depth to them beyond just, I think a lot of people like think that what we just do is tell people how to do self care. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, we do, that's part of what we do. Um, And some people might think, Oh, we just teach you how to meet your needs. Well, no yes we do that that's part of what we do but that is not I mean the the real power of what we do when it comes to needs is helping people to understand things through this needs context through this needs lens where you can look at a situation like a, an issue the one that we were talking I was talking about in the article was um the labor crisis and the great resignation and if you look at it it's uh, one of the things i shared in it was the fact that most people think it was it created or certainly catalyzed by the pandemic and actually when you look over back over the last 12 years that's not the case it, there was a trend an increasing trend and actually we're not that far off being in alignment with what the linear prediction would have been slightly more but not a huge amount more and the interesting thing is you can see people are, I mean, yes, there are certain trends in terms of the the reasons that people were um, leaving their jobs and the reason people were resigning. But as soon as you put a leads lens on that, you go, well, of course, because their needs are compromising. This need, this need, this need, this need, this need. And here are the ways that this need, this need, this need, and this need are being compromised. So here are the ways that you would actually address this need, this need, this need, and this need in this specific context at a general level. Then when you get into the individual level underneath that and you go, okay, for somebody... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Serena's head's just exploded. <laughs> um, when then when you go, okay, so this is the general thing, but now look at this as an individual where they've got this situation going on at home, they've got this situation with their children, they've got this situation with a friend, and how are their needs currently standing in terms of being met and unmet? Then you put the work layer on it. Then you put the uh, oh, oops, I put I put too many layers on it. Hit my microphone. <laughs> um, but that's the thing is that this is what people don't understand is the layers of nuance that sit underneath this. And this is part of the reason. Also, I've been a little nervous about sharing the detail of the needs because people oversimplify it and they go, oh, yeah, I'm meeting those needs. And I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, no, you're really not. And that's not meant as a criticism or a judgment. Right. It's just I can see the layers underneath and it's not just the surface level thing. It's not black and white. And no. that's the thing. And I'm I'm going to do it. Uh Claire knows what I'm going to do. I know where we're going. <laughs> uh, my husband, I love him dearly. He's very black and white. So mm-hmm. sometimes seeing that gray area is like, 
it's a bit of a challenge. Mm-hmm. And I think that's with most people. Most people seem to focus on the the black and the white. They're like, it's the this simpl- or this. The simple version. Yeah. Or the and overly, overly simple overly version. Simple the oversimplified version. version. Yeah. And it's like, it's this. And it's like, well, yes, and. Yeah. And I feel like the gray is the kind of the and in this situation. It's right. Like, and. Is, are, is this a factor? Is this mm-hmm. a factor? Is this a factor? We're, we think of the black and white, but we yeah. don't think of the factors of gray that lie with under that black and white. Are and there 50 shades of the gray? I'm sure there's many more shades <laughs> than 50. But. Oh, by the way, that's not where I thought you were going with this. Oh, really? Yeah. And you want to know where I thought you were going with this? I have no clue if it wasn't about him. <laughs> I thought that you were going to the place where you thought you got it at oh. one point. <laughs> oh, no, we weren't. We... <laughs> We weren't going there. (laughs) It's true. Yeah, before I actually, I mean, when Claire and I first became friends and then we became really good friends and then we became key best friends, like (laughs) we had the stages of our relationship there. And And even when you first started working with the universal needs, right? You just started working with the business. Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing. (laughs) Um, But no, and I, I, but I own it because it's a real, it was it was real. I was right. like, oh, yeah, I get this. She talked about it. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. I get it. I get it. And then I you went get, through like, it. this layer of it. It's and that's layer. the thing. Yeah. You get the first, you get the black or the white layer, but you don't the, get the it's gray. It's the surface layer. Right. Absolutely. And it's that gray that really makes the difference in it. Right. And I'm going to own. The, the only reason that I don't call, get called out on this stuff for the most part, is because I've been the one developing the content. So when I realize there's another layer of ground, I'm like, oh, new content, great, we'll add that in. I'm not getting called out for the fact that I didn't know it beforehand because it didn't <laughs> exist beforehand. But I've had that too, where I'm like, oh, I thought I got it. Like when I first started doing this work, like at a needs point of view, I can't, I wonder sometimes whether if I realized how nuanced and complex this work would get, whether I would still have gone down this path. Because, I mean, I wouldn't have known at the time that I would have had the capacity to really understand it in the way that I do now. Um, But the truth is, initially, I was like, I wanted some needs. I wanted to know how to meet the needs. And we're going to look at ways of meeting the needs, which is like way already way more nuanced than most other needs models out there. Um, Then when you add in, hold on, this is not just about my needs as in at a baseline, it's a, how does this, this but now becomes a tool which allows me to navigate, and this is no exaggeration, literally every single aspect of every single area of my life. I can use the needs lens and I'm like, well, okay, I can. Not a single, I want to tell you, not a single fucking Thing doesn't relate back to this and sometimes I sit there I annoyingly mean, so I, thank you for saying that because obviously uh, I, I have helped in the process of this is not my content but sometimes I'm like fucking Claire she's nah, ah like all of the things because I I get it. And it's it's been so frustrating because I have had this I've had this for years where um like I don't know I know that you had it with me when we first met where needs, people are like needs, oh needs, my needs, god this needs, woman needs, talks about needs. needs so much like everything's not about needs or even like oh she's only talking about needs all the time. Oh. Hello thunder. Um yes you have needs too. You have needs too. <laughs> we we hear you. Um, that a lot of people are like, oh, she's talking about needs all the time. It's a form of self-promotion. Like she's doing this because this is what she does for a living. She wants people to know about what she does for a living so she can sell to us. <laughs> I get that. And I know that you you thought that when we first met, right? I thought that when I first met and it's even like I'll be in discussions. I had a discussion with my husband. I mean, what was it? Like a week ago, maybe. Mm-hmm. And in the middle of our discussion, it was like, everything you do, every second of every day is done to meet your needs. And he looked at me, he goes, really? And I'm like, <laughs> yes, like, but it's true. It's like every little, like, think, you go pee. Well, you have a need right. there. You sleep, you have a need there. You, like, every you sip of water, you go to work, you have a conversation with a friend. Right, like, you give a hug. Right. I mean, everything. Every single and it said it was really annoying for me in a, in a way because I'm like I get how people are seeing me I get how this must seem when you don't get it at this level and I'm like I get how 
fucking annoying I was down trying to Do you help. remember when I came to you and I was like, I'm talking about needs constantly. I got- like, I can't, like, it will come up in a conversation. I'm actually trying to not talk about it. I'm like, don't mention needs. Don't mention needs. Don't say but it, don't say but, it, but don't your say needs. It. And I'm like, <laughs> damn it. Oh. And well, this, here we go. <laughs> right. And this is the thing is that because it affects everything and because it relates to everything, that's also the reason on like on the on one side, it's like, oh my goodness, well, if we give them the information without the, the stuff that's going to really make this applicable, it could really cause some challenges for people. On the flip side, it's the reason we want everybody to get this because it literally applies to everything. So unless people understand. Well, I'm going to stop you right there. Go ahead. Everything and every. Buddy, uh-huh. every single person mm-hmm. has the same needs, which is why mm-hmm. we call them the unit. Mm-mm. Oh, oh, I'm jumping in there. I'm jumping in. Sorry, I've got to jump yes. in here. So in Western culture, yes, everybody has the same 12 universal needs. What I will say is that some people around the world relate to their sen- relate to being in such a different way that... I maybe they do have the same 12 universal needs possibly it's a it's a possibility but just simply how they relate to the world means that I could not possibly say for sure that that is that their needs would be exactly the same way that I I can think of there's a um, I'm trying to think of the the name of the the group of people as a community of people that is referenced in the book Radical Wholeness by Philip Shepard. I will go and look it up. I will share it in the show notes, uh, which the community is that I'm talking about, where they relate to the world. Like we have five, we relate to the world of, as having five senses, right? And we imagine, so we talk about senses as like, there's this like fixed outline of our body mm-hmm. and a sense is something through which we uh, take information from outside of the body into the body. So our sight, our sound, our taste, our smell, our touch. So these are the ways that we understand information about the world around us that is outside of us. There are play- people around the world where they don't have five senses. They relate in a different way. They have different senses. So for example, balance is a sense to this particular community of people. So balance is how you are in relationship with the world. Like So it's not an external to internal thing. It's a, how are we in relationship with the world? And there's com- their communication, I actually think is one of the, it's been a while since I've read the book, so I can't like think of them all off the top of my head. But that's the caveat I want to put on this is that we say in Western culture, these 12 universal needs are universal within that culture. They may be universal beyond that, but without understanding all of the different cultures and how those cultures relate to their own sense of being and their own place in the world, I can't possibly say for, for a fact that that is true. So I just wanted to put that little caveat on. Thank you for that. <laughs> I mean, that was all new information to not to be on the video. I'm just taking it. I'm like... But that's, <laughs> I mean, that's part of the work as well is hearing something like that and being like, okay, it's not absolute. Like mm-hmm. we've taken absolutes out. We realize yeah. there, there are always. There's always more to learn. Yes. And there's always more to understand. And that's the thing about needs as well is that the, the, with the needs work, we're constantly discovering new things. It's like, oh, that applies to this. I know that um, uh, just um, might even have been the last episode. Uh, we talked about it being an antidote to anxiety, like how you relate to your needs being an antidote uh, to anxiety. And we share in that episode, that was never the intention. Like I didn't set out to, to create something that would be helpful for anxiety. It was like only through, I, I used it and I was like, hold on, this is helping with feelings of anxiety and then when Serena came along with somebody who has an anxiety diagnosis and shared it was helpful for her with relating to anxiety I'm like okay this is a new application for this that I didn't realize existed so we're always learning we're constantly learning new applications new benefits uh, new things that are helpful and we're also expanding the content and expanding our knowledge and going oh this is something new this is something new this is something new so go ahead and I want to say realizing as you said as we're going through this discussion like realizing where it doesn't relate and mm. trying to encompass that in our program Absolutely. or noting and acknowledging the fact, okay, this this may not fit with all people. Oh, right, exactly. So, well, and and even- so I really appreciate that because you, you guys are seeing it. Li- I mean, this is how <laughs> it happens in our world. It's like, <laughs> it's something like that. It's like, uh, oh, oh. I didn't know that. <laughs> okay. Or, you know, looking up something and, mm-hmm. you know, making sure it's like, okay, oh, oh, I didn't know that. Now I do. And 
how does that integrate in with what we already understand about this? Yes. And actually, I'm going to be really transparent because um, last, as I said, I think it's the last episode, the antidote, uh, the, uh, here we go. There we go. I literally, I've just, I've just done just it right just there. It. I just did it right there. <laughs> and everyone's like, what did she do? I don't understand. So the, originally we had named that, that, um, that episode, the antidote to anxiety, and Serena and I were having a conversation about a week ago. Like it was all, it had been recorded. All the images were done. It was, it was scheduled. It was uploaded. It was the social media posts were all scheduled and everything. And Serena said to me, she's like, what is it called? The antidote to anxiety? And I was like, yeah, I think it is. She said, we need to change that. It's not the antidote to anxiety. It's an antidote to anxiety. And we went, and I was like, oh my God, you're completely right. Like we know that most people find that this is helpful with anxiety and we can't, it's not definitive. We can't say this is going to work universally for all people at all times in all situations. There may be other approaches that other people find as effective or sometimes even more effective. And that's okay. We're not saying this is the way to do everything. And this is the only tool to use. We're saying this is how this works for us and the people that we work with and here's the new things that we're discovering about this that are also the, the new things to know about so it's like we're continually continually learning developing refining our understanding refining our language refining how we're communicating about these things to ensure that we are representing this as accurately and as effectively as possible so the, re the, the real challenge and the real issue with this right now is we don't have an answer to this question today. We are in this conversation, but what we wanted to do was we wanted to basically bring you into the conversation and let, let you know what our thought process is. Because I'm sure that there have been times people have been frustrated listening to this podcast going, would you just tell us what the fucking needs are for us? Like, just, just tell us what the needs are, please. Like, look at you swearing. I know. I knew you were going <laughs> to I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> But that's, and the reason I did that was because I'm sure that is literally what people have been thinking at times. Well, like, that is the true feel. Like, yeah. who the fuck do these chicks think they <laughs> are? Like, for God's like, sake, come on, just tell us what the needs are. So I'm sure that that, and that frustration, valid, understand mm -hmm. it. Serena knows it. We've like, we've, we've both been there at we've various just, times. Uh, we've been discussing it for a long, a long time. time. And yeah. we realized like, okay, maybe we need to look at doing this differently. And let's bring it to the people who are who who are the people who uh, want to know about want to know about it. Like if you're listening to us, I'm sure you're kind of chomping at the bit to be like, all right, well, what are these yeah. needs? You're yes, we want to know what the needs are. Or no, actually, we've listened to the conversation and we we think that what you're doing actually is the responsible thing to do. So like we're open to any kind of feedback um, and we wanted to open the conversation. Up. We are continuing the conversation of ourselves. We have some ideas about how we might be able to do this or the things mm -hmm. that may make it easier for us to share, slash not share, et cetera, as we go forward. But as I said, we wanted to hear from you and we wanted to let you know this is how this works in our world we don't just go okay we made a decision because there was a period of time there was a point in time where I made a decision yep. before Serena came along which is like I did not share the detail of these needs outside of the context of this program like I mean I think back to one of the conversations we had in a previous episode mm. I didn't know what the needs were the first year we were friends it was always yeah. kind of elusive and maybe there'd be like a like a little, like a mention a one slip or, two, or yeah. uh, you know, a well, mention. I, like with everybody else, like I'll go, oh, security need. It wasn't like yes. a sit, but I was like, I need to explain, I need to say the need for you to get what I'm talking about. Yeah. It, but it wasn't a, this is the need. This is how you meet it. This is what you're doing wrong. And I would. And Serena's like one of the closest people in the world to me. If I wasn't going to tell her, I wasn't going to tell anyone. Like that's <laughs> just reality. Well, the, I've got a secret. I mean, I wouldn't, I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't tell my husband. I'm mm -hmm. like, you can. He had the content. Like you, you listen to it so yes. you can get the context. The context in yeah. this understanding that we're so worried about. Without that context, are we doing the right thing? Releasing what the, the needs the are. The detail of the needs. And so, like we may, I made that decision at one point, and that's kind of. I mean, this is kind of what we've just been talking about. Just because we've made a decision at one point does not mean that forever that will be. It means that at the appropriate time when it comes up, we go back and we review that decision. We go, 
Is that still the right decision? At one point, it felt like the right decision. Does it still feel like the right decision? Now we're kind of on the fence. Maybe, maybe not. Like, let's err on the side of caution right now while we're making our decision. But maybe there's going to come a point in this time where we'll, we'll review it and we'll be like, actually, no, this doesn't feel like the right decision anymore. This feels like the right choice for where it is that we want to go and what we want to do and how we want to support people with this content. So that's how we, like, uh, th- th- there is nothing, I would, I, I want to say that nothing is ever set in stone with us. And I'm mm-hmm. sure that there must be things that probably are in terms of like our, our uh, ethics and, and our integrity yeah. and those sorts of things, our values, I suppose, um, that um, we, we, we identified like specifically five that are really important to us. And I do believe that those probably are set in stone. Um, but in terms of the choices, the content, we're continually reviewing. We're continually looking to see how can we improve this? Is this currently the right thing and if it's not currently the right thing let's change it like I always say to people yeah now is the best time like now now is what matters so it's like it might have been the right decision yesterday it might not be the right decision to um tomorrow is it the right decision now what's the choice that makes sense well and we want to bring everybody into it as well because this is who we are as people this is the business that we want to create yeah, I guess create like we want to be we want to we want to know what you think. We want to know if you have if you're like, oh, I don't quite agree with that. Let us know. Right. And like there there's no finite. There's no definitive. There's no absolutes. It's we're constantly growing. We're constantly learning. And we realize that you're on this journey with us. So mm-hmm. we want to bring you into this journey with us. We want you to be part of this. And it's important to say that just because someone shares something with us doesn't mean to say we're immediately going, oh, yeah, OK. Mm-hmm. And we're going to check. Like we may disagree and that's yes. OK as well. But we want to consider these perspectives mm-hmm. to see whether actually, yeah, we agree that this is a different direction that we want to go in. So um, anything else you want to add before we finish up? Well, I guess. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I thought we were going to bring up Larry again if I was honest. But... Oh, can we? <laughs> nope, nope, oh. nope. Moving on. Another time, I promise. I love Larry. I, another time, I promise. <laughs> so, um, yeah, please do get in touch with us. Um, you should know by now how to get in touch with us in terms of social media, via email, via the website. Um, just get in... I'm sorry. You know we have to do a Larry episode now, right? Yeah, and I know we have to do it. It's episode. totally going to be off. Well, and the funny <laughs> the thing about it is, no, it's not. I Okay, I'm going to just do a little little preview of that episode. Cats are amazing at getting their needs met. They're a great model, role Ooh. model for prioritizing your needs and not crossing your boundaries more so than other animals are like cats definitely are a better role model often when it comes to meeting their own needs and it comes then sometimes dogs may be for example and even though i'm probably more of a dog person than a cat person it could be a really good episode actually so i'm just just saying anyway (laughs) before we go winding off on another larry tangent um which could easily happen Mm -hmm. Get in touch, send us a message, DM us, email us, however you want to get in touch. Let us know what your thoughts are. Let us know what your questions are. Maybe you don't have a thought. Maybe you're like, well, what about this? Let us know and we will add that to our kind of um, our decision-making process and we will keep you updated as this, this situation unfolds, as we kind of move further along. Uh, we'll share with you uh, what, we, what decisions we make and if things change, when things change, as they change, we'll keep you posted. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for watching. Uh, we're sending you lots of love. And between now and next time, remember to stay safe, stay safe and continue to meet your needs. Bye. Bye, everyone. That's it for today. If you like what you heard and would like to see some of Serena's awesome facial expressions, check out the video podcast on YouTube. And remember, we value your opinion and we want you to value it too. Well, shit. It really is that simple. Thank you.